2024 is going to be a huge year for Aston Martin and it all starts with this. The new and massively improved Aston Martin Vantage. Better looks, better handling and much, much more power. If it looks a bit familiar, that's because this car is technically a facelift of 2018's Vantage. But Aston Martin has changed so much inside, outside and under the skin that it's a completely different beast. This is less a midlife facelift for Aston's entry-level car and more a full surgical reconstruction. So, is this the Vantage that will knock the Porsche 911 off the perch of being best sports car? Let's see how it stacks up. First, just look at it. This Vantage was always a beautiful looking thing from the day it arrived in 2018, so Aston didn't really need to reinvent the wheel. What it's done is loosely base the design on their Concept 177, and it looks stunning. I mean, this front is pure theatrics, this large grille, which is actually 40% larger than it was previously, and these large cooling vents at the front. And above there, you have Aston Martin's latest light signature for the all new Matrix LED headlamps, which look very sexy. It's actually 30 millimeters wider than it was before, which might not sound very much, but it makes a big difference. Around the side, the biggest change is this little area here. See this detail? This strake is a classic Aston Martin design motif that wasn't on the previous Vantage, but is now a focal point for these new vents. Frameless wing mirrors, which makes it all look a lot sleeker. And then, presenting door handles. How fancy. The Vantage also has three new forged alloy wheel options, all 21 inches as standard, and it's available in a variety of different liveries. The back follows the front and that it's just that little bit wider, but it looks more dramatic because of these new vents either side. Quad tail pipes, they're much bigger, and they look so cool. It just looks a lot meaner. And if you think the exterior is a good glow up, wait till you have a look inside. Aston has clearly moved on from the outdated interior design on their old Vantage and stepped things up a gear with a much more contemporary design. Whereas before it was a touch basic and bordering on cheap looking, this new design feels like it belongs in a modern supercar. The vents are slimmer and the 10 inch infotainment display is now integrated neatly into the dash rather than resembling a random little iPad stuck on as an afterthought. God, it really is lovely in here. Driving position is spot on. I mean, it always has been in the Vantage, but this just feels like a cut above. And it all feels super modern in here. The user interface is good. It's nice, easy to use. It's taken the software that was first seen on the DB12. And look, actual buttons. Buttons for climate control and look, even for exhaust and suspension. How refreshing is that? And some of the tech is proper cutting edge, so you can now get online connectivity for the maps, which means you can choose a destination, read online reviews, and navigate to the destination whilst avoiding traffic in real time. There's also Apple CarPlay and an optional 1170 watt audio system from Bowers & Wilkins. It's still not the most practical thing in the world, especially compared to other two-seat sports cars, but there is storage in here. Look, there's space for your phone. There's even a glove box. To Aston's credit, because the engine is up there, rather than down here-ish, like the 911 and the R8, there's plenty of space back here for space. At 270 litres, and for a car like this, that is impressively large. But let's be honest, people aren't hugely excited about what's going on behind the seats, and much more excited about what's going on up there. Yep, the bulk of the updates for the 2024 Vantage are under the bonnet. Aston Martin has taken the AMG sourced 4 litre V8, made the twin turbos blow harder, modified the cams and the compression ratios, and improved the cooling significantly. The result? It's leapt from 535 horsepower in the 2018 car to 665, and that's all going to the rear wheels. 
That's 15 horsepower more than a Porsche 911 Turbo S and 55 horsepower more than an Audi R8 GT rear-wheel drive. And this has got 800 newton meters of torque now, up from 700, and a full 250 more than the Audi. It's now two tenths of a second quicker than it was to 62 miles an hour, doing it in 3.4 seconds. And the top speed is now 202 miles an hour. Thing is, all of those things make the Vantage's top trump card look very appealing, but it doesn't matter unless the driving experience actually matches it. Thankfully, Aston Martin claim, and I quote, that this is sharper, more visceral and more vocal than the outgoing car. I mean, obviously they're gonna say that, but there is a lot to support that that is a very legit claim. To improve the way the car drives, Aston has stiffened the aluminium body to increase precision and feel through the corners, and new Bill Stein DTX adaptive dampers are significantly more responsive. They've even changed the speed-sensitive steering column for more sharpness and directness. The eight-speed automatic gearbox has been reworked for quicker shifts and improved in-gear acceleration. And then there's the digital handling systems all of them. Honestly, this thing has more sophisticated electronics than Apple's underground R&D bunker. So, I'm going to demonstrate by reading this quote here from the press release. Ready? <sighs> An advanced vehicle dynamics control system takes information from multiple car and driver sensors, such as the six-axis accelerometer ESP system, taking that information and comparing it against ESP model can then actively control the ride handling and steering to optimise vehicle response IMU and behaviour. Inertial measurement unit, which combines monitoring of surge, the degree and rate of ESP intervention, is always perfectly judged. Or in other words, it probably goes round corners really well and probably does cool skids. I could go on, because Aston Martin definitely does. We could talk about the adaptable electric rear differential designed to get the car around tight turns as sharply as possible, or the manually adjustable traction control system that allows you to choose the amount of wheel spin you want between more grippy and more leery, or, on a much more basic level, the 50-50 front-to-rear weight distribution, the custom-made Michelin Pilot Sport tyres, and the retuned brake servo designed for better pedal feel. So, you're probably getting the idea now that the 2024 Vantage is way more than a bog-standard midlife facelift. I mean, all of these changes should make for a very, very fun car to drive. I mean, just as fun as a 911 or an R8 or a Mercedes AMG GT. It's a big ask, but for all of the reasons I've just explained, it certainly bodes very well. And we'll let you know once we get behind the wheel later this year. Thank <laughs> you.